if you read the title, you already know what's about to go down. We're about to hit one of the most heated debates in One Piece that comes probably right next to Zoro versus Sanji. Now, I think Yonko versus Admirals became a thing pretty much after the events of Marineford, but it really hasn't exploded until the most recent years. Now, if you saw a video I made a long time ago, Whitebeard versus Everybody, then you probably know what side I stand on. I think that the Yonko are definitely stronger than the Admirals, but all strong points need something to back them up. So we're going to go over those things today and we're going to point out just how powerful Yonko are and why they are above Admirals. Now the best and honestly the only display we have of a Yonko fighting an Admiral is Whitebeard versus Akainu in Marineford. Of course this fight is a source of a lot of contention within the fandom just because of all of the plot points, the story progression, how things should work versus how they ended up working, and as a whole how this fight stacks up to fights we have now. Personally I think the fight is a very good indicator of how the power structure stands. We have Whitebeard who is the world's strongest man versus Akainu who to a lot of people is considered the strongest admiral, probably the strongest navy official at Marineford. I would make the argument that Sengoku or possibly Garp would be stronger, but I think Akainu would be in the top three, no less. And with this fight, we get a clear victor. We have Whitebeard as the winner of this fight. And this is a Whitebeard who is taking damage from war, who has had a heart attack, who has a hole in his chest. Whitebeard has been going through it the entirety of this fight, while Akainu is more or less pretty clean. The most he's probably taken damage from is his clash with Whitebeard, otherwise he's basically just been mopping fodder. Now there are many that say Whitebeard snuck Akainu, and this is why he had basically the upper hand in this fight. One, I would argue that in a battlefield you really shouldn't be getting snuck up on. You should be prepared for fighting, especially if you start killing the opposing team. So Akainu should have definitely been prepared to fight anybody, especially the guy who calls himself the dad to the guy you just killed. Two, observation hockey is a thing. And we can expect anybody, I believe, Vice Admiral and above to have some semblance of observation hockey. Now, Akainu being at the position he is, he should have a higher level of observation hockey. He should be able to, at the very least, sense when someone's coming up behind him. People also argue that Whitebeard was bloodlusted, and that's why he kind of has the physical advantage over Akainu. But in my opinion, Akainu was bloodlusted as soon as he noticed that Dragon Sun was here. He was basically going on a rampage trying to kill Luffy. And with that rampage, he wouldn't stop for anything. He was punching through anybody and everybody in his way to get to Luffy. While he may not have had Whitebeard as his target, I think he still was in the mindset that he needs to blast through whatever he needs to get through to get to Luffy. Whitebeard would have been one of those things. Those points aside, Akainu does lose the fight. And this isn't to say that Akainu isn't strong. He does get good hits in and he does critically damage Whitebeard. But he does not win the fight. He goes down and he's out until I believe Whitebeard passes. He doesn't come back until he starts hunting basically the rest of the Whitebeard pirates and Luffy again. And even with him getting good hits off, I think that still points in the Yonko favor because they can eat those hits and keep going. Whitebeard took that hit, had half his head blasted off, and then went on to fight the rest of the war. And this is Whitebeard who's old, who's sick, who has taken a lot of damage, and he's still this powerful that he's fighting basically the top admiral and winning. Even the setup for Marineford shows why Yonko are stronger. You have the entirety of the navy. You have the fleet admiral, you have all of the admirals, you have the warlords, and you have the entirety of basically the vice admirals, the fodder, everyone you can pulled up to one spot to fight one Yonko crew. And you have to look at it like this. Yes, Whitebeard has the largest crew behind him, so you need numbers to back that up. But if you take Whitebeard out of the Whitebeard Pirates equation and take them to Marineford, then everyone that Marineford has is overkill. You don't need the seven warlords, all three admirals, the fleet admiral, Garp. You don't need all those people there if Whitebeard's not there. We saw how quickly the admirals had the capability of dealing with some of the stronger people in the Whitebeard Pirates. We saw Josie get taken down, we saw Marco get taken down. We have Vista who's being blocked by Mihawk, so you really don't need all the admirals there. You don't even need all the Yonko there. I mean, to be honest, the only other major threat would have been Ors, and he can be easily taken care of by someone like Kuma. No, the reason they have that stock of people is because a Yonko, and the strongest Yonko, is coming. And let's take a look at some of the other Yonko for good measure. We have Big Mom, Kaido, Shanks, and Blackbeard, who are on their own without their crews as well, powerhouses in their own right. 
We've seen Big Mom tank and shrug off some of the strongest attacks we've seen in the show so far. Back in Whole Cake, she was eating gear for her punches, she was eating her own attacks, she was eating everything that was in sight. Nothing was stopping her, at most it just pushed her back. And in Wano, she continues to be that monster. Even at the end of her fight with Law and Kid, she isn't really defeated, she's just removed from the fight. She got pushed off the island because she was tanking everything. And Kaido takes feats like that and then he bumps it up with incredible stamina and incredible power. In one session, he's fought the Scabbards, the Supernova, Yamato, and then back to back Luffy's. And he hasn't stopped yet, and it still seems like he has the advantage. He's the world's strongest creature and the one said to win any 1v1 fight. Now, Shanks and Blackbeard have a few less feats on their belt. Shanks obviously has his clash with Whitebeard, and then he has the duels with Mihawk. While Blackbeard, he's mostly notoriety. We know he has two of the strongest devil fruits in existence. We know that he beat Marco and the rest of the Whitebeard pirates. He beat Ace. So he has some strength to back it up. But there isn't really anything that screams that he's going to dust an admiral. However, I think he certainly has the capability, especially with his fruit, that kind of makes him OP versus the admirals. And of course, we have to talk about how strong the admirals are, because they are by no means slouches. They are powerhouses in their own right, in their own field. Aokiji can freeze Miles in an instant. He can change the world into a tundra. Akainu can create volcanoes and he can melt basically anything in his path. Kizaru can spam light and move at the speed of light. Not to mention the addition of the other admirals, and while we don't know what Green Bull can do, we've seen what Fujitor can do. And it's insane, he can call down meteors, he can lift a city's worth of rubble with ease. The man rewrites gravity, so he is definitely strong. And even looking at the fleet admirals, if you look at Sengoku, he has power in his own right, he has a broken devil fruit, he's got strength just on his own, and he's got all kinds of hockey. And we can include Garp too, because he is probably to the marines what Whitebeard was to pirates, as in the strongest one to exist. But at the end of the day, if you put them in a fighting arena and you do them 1v1, the Yonko are going to win. For example, let's throw Kaido in there and let's have him face Kizaru. I don't think beam spam is going to stop Kaido. I think he pretty much eats those and he can shoot whatever he wants back. He can shoot wind size, he can shoot boro breath, he can cause tornadoes. He can do something to Kizaru. And this is especially the case with Kizaru because while he does move the speed of light, a lot of his stuff is blunt force. A lot of his stuff would need some kind of Conqueror's Hockey coating to do damage to Kaido or else he's probably going to eat it. You throw Aokiji in there and there becomes a speed issue. We know Kaido can speed blitz and while Aokiji is definitely fast, I don't think he's on the, the level of speed that Kaido has kind of shown. Sure, he has a Logi ability, which means he can pretty much eat hits and come back, but how does that work well with Conqueror's Hockey coating? Does Aokiji have it? We know Kaido does, and we know he can put that on his club. And what makes it worse for Aokiji is that he is a physical Logia. So while attacks don't really phase through him, he has to break apart and rebuild. Now I think Akainu and surprisingly Fujitora have better chances against Kaido, but even still, I don't think they have enough raw power to get past Kaido's raw power. I don't think one may go from Akainu is taking off Kaido's head. And honestly, I don't know how well heat works against going through Kaido's impenetrable defenses. Now gravity on the other hand might work really well against Kaido. We haven't really seen anyone break free unless Fujitora was distracted if he wasn't putting his all into the fight. In a 1v1, I don't think it's going to be an issue. And it's things like that, it's matchups like that, that get me to say, in a 1v1, if you're going to put a Yonko versus an Admiral, 9 times out of 10, that Yonko is going to win. The Admirals are strong, but I think the Yonko are made to be the strongest for a reason. They exist in this world as kind of the top force. And honestly, if they weren't the top force, I feel like the, the world government, the Navy, would have brought them down years ago. If you can use your military force to take out a Yonko, then they should easily be able to do that and sweep through them all. They don't have to fight them all at once, but you know they can go by territory to territory and take out Yonko. But I don't think they win that fight, and I think that's why they don't do it. I think that's one of the reasons why they kind of have to let these Yonko roam the new world, because they really can't stop them. It also explains things like the Warlords, like the SSG. Basically, they're trying to find things to stop the Yonko. They just haven't done it yet. Now, we'll have to wait and see if the SSG actually has that power and capability. But as of now, they haven't been able to do that. And that's why the Yonko are still roaming as they are. 
So that's my point on the matter. I know there are pretty much conflicting ideas on each side and each keep going back and forth, but I think it's pretty definitive and pretty well written in the story that the Yonko are in fact stronger than the Admirals and they're supposed to be. Let me know what side you guys are on in the comments down below. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.